But to me, it's, it, it, is kind of, it is kind of funny that Emil thinks that Fide is important enough to where these letters are going to override, like, especially probably the most powerful government in the world and their regulations in terms of uh, getting out of China and returning to China. <laughs> about top seed let's let's pause it top seed ding Lora misses out on fide grand prix the fide grand prix will start on february 4th with its first leg in berlin without the top seed gm ding Lorette. the chinese player failed to obtain a visa in time to, tr to be able to travel to germany and has been replaced by gm radoslav Wojtaszek. GM Dmitry Andrejkin can't play either and has been replaced by gm andre Asipenko. ding and Andrejkin are still listed to play the second and third leg of the Grand Prix respectively, but by playing just one leg, they won't have a chance to finish among the top two places. The top two of the Grand Prix are the last two spots that qualify for the Canada's tournament to be held in June in Madrid. The winner of that tournament earns the right to challenge world champion Magnus Carlsen in next year's match. Um, okay, so I'm going to say something to start with. Uh, I don't really understand this at all. If Ding and Andre can, can only play one leg of the tournament, then they should have just been replaced by two players for the entire leg, um, or for the entire series of three events uh this i don't understand because also this is very unfair then to esipenko and Wojtaszek as well like because if they can only play one event why are they playing so basically you end up in a situation where now you have four people who, who have no chance and also this means they have potential to ruin it for example say let's just say hypothetically either esipenko or Wojtaszek wins the, wins the whole tournament wins the group or wins the whole tournament they then basically they they basically have played and they, they basically have taken away the chances of a bunch of players as well so i don't like this at all i think as, if, if ding and andre can, can't play they should just be replaced for the whole cycle this doesn't really make sense at all um so let's keep going here we go so ding's absence in the first leg of the grand prix is therefore a big blow to the career of the 29 year old chinese top grandmaster and also undermines the legitimacy of the current world championship cycle Ding is the current world number three player rated 2799 and the Grand Prix was his last chance to qualify for the candidates as he did not participate in the earlier qualifier tournaments, the 2021 FIDE World Cup and the 2021 FIDE Chess.com Grand Swiss. All right, so as we keep going, in earlier cycles, the Chinese number one could still have qualified by rating, but FIDE did away with this clause this time, instead gave the Grand Swiss two spots instead of one. As a result, seven out of the eight candidates had to qualify by playing in either the World Cup, the Grand Swiss, or the Grand Prix, while GM Timur Rajbov was awarded a spot after he had withdrawn from the previous candidates tournament as the pandemic just took off. The other players who have qualified for the candidates are GM Fabiano Caruana, Jan Krishas Duda, Ali Reza Ferruja, Sergei Karyakin, and Jan Nepomniachi. All right. Organized by World Chess, the FIDE Grand Prix series comprises three tournaments and features 24 players with each player competing in two of the three events. The three tournaments have 16 participants each and are held in Berlin, Belgrade, and again in Berlin between February and April 2022. The players are distributed over the three tournaments as follows. All right, so there we go. All right, so now we get to the meat of the story, of course, which is Ding was supposed to play in the first two legs of the Grand Prix told Chess.com that he was unable to get his visa in time because he had a return flight after the second leg was not yet available. This is likely to be related to COVID restrictions affecting air travel schedules. FIDE and World Chess have done their best to help me, Ding added. FIDE Chief, Chief Marketing Communications Officer David Yada said, Ding only applied for a visa on January, January 26th, which has proved to be too late. Despite the efforts of FIDE and the German Chess Federation, we were unable to speed up the process. Okay, um, it's safe to say that Ding's absence from the World Cup and the Grand Swiss was also because of the pandemic and China's strict measures regarding traveling abroad. Asked if he failed to obtain a visa for those events as well, he responded, I didn't, tr didn't even try. So what that says, you guys, is that basically um, a few things. First of all, clearly China's regulations are very stringent and very difficult to deal with um, in terms of why he didn't. Okay, that's partly on him for applying so late. Maybe Ding could have applied earlier, um, but I suspect... That it's related to when you book the ticket as well again obviously it's in a different situation i know that like the rules regarding lockdowns and and visas and everything with china are worse than anywhere else in, in in the entire world without a doubt um so i mean probably probably it was too late but again has ding actually said when he applied is the question because they're saying he only applied on the 26th um which maybe maybe actually what it is is he couldn't do it earlier because he couldn't get a flight again another another problem that i think people fail to realize is that with china 
I don't believe that it's it's as simple as like the US where you just book a flight. I'm pretty sure China has very limited availability on flights. Um, if there if there are even many flights at all. Um, so yeah, basically what happens is apparently you can catch a flight out, but you cannot catch a flight back into the country unless you booked a return flight. And he couldn't book a return flight until January 26 is what it sounds like. So um, it's like, is it, that actually, I kind of think says it all. So I don't really like David's, David's take, uh, basically like blaming Ding for this incident when it sounds like, uh, it sounds like Ding just couldn't get it. He just couldn't get a return flight because there are no flights to China. Um, so I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I think you're saying regardless of flights, well, you're wrong, Bar won't because he can't, he can't get a visa if he doesn't have a return flight. He can't get back into China. Like he can't get back into China if he doesn't have a return flight. So it's not as simple as saying he could have just applied. Um, uh, because if he didn't have a return flight, he can't get in. Like, it's, I mean, you're saying he should just book a ticket and then stay in Europe forever. I mean, Ding's English isn't, I mean, it, it's, it's okay, but it's not great. Obviously in countries like Germany, English is not the first language. And to basically end up in a situation where he's stuck in Europe for months on end. And again, as you know, there are, there are rules that even how long you can stay in Europe. Um, then like, it just becomes very messy. Very, very messy. Uh, so I don't think, I, I don't really like David Yada saying that because it's really, um, that's sort of not not telling the whole story, in my opinion. So I, I don't like that. But anyway, let's keep going. Um, also, I would I would say it's funny that it's funny that David Yada David Yada is the person who responded to this topic because David himself, whenever I asked him questions regarding regarding this event, he said it's all World Chess. Talk to World Chess. Nobody at FIDE can help you with any of this stuff. It's all World Chess. So. I don't really know why David is stepping into this and, and, and basically giving this this uh, this comment when he basically told me that the reality was much different than this. So it, it, this kind of actually rings a, a little bit. This is just disingenuine and just I mean it's just not being genuine. Let's let's put it that way. Um, so I, I don't really like David stepping into this because based on what he told me, he he has no business or, or not shouldn't even be involved in any of this. So let's keep going. Um, all right. Okay, so let's let's keep scrolling. Let's go through the article. Note that another Chinese player, GM Wei Yi, was replaced in January by GM Pentala Hare Krishna, likely as a result of travel restrictions as well. It's unclear what the situation is for the other players who are playing the first leg in Berlin and whether everybody will be making it in time. So again, you see Wei Yi, probably Wei Yi was like trying to do it. And at some point he's like, okay, it's just too much. You know, it's just too too much. And so I'm just not going to play. Uh, and the fact that it happened to two Chinese players, I think is, is pretty telling as well. Okay, so Yada writes, most of the participants are traveling to Berlin today, so yes, they are expected to arrive on time, but life is full of uncertainty, uncertainties now more than ever. GM Daniil Duboff, who had to leave the Tata Steel Chess Tournament three rounds before the end after testing positive for COVID, most probably can play. Duboff has tested negative twice already and will undergo one more test upon arrival, said Yada. GM Peter Heine Nielsen, a regular critic of FIDE, expressed his worries in May 2021 that an extra qualifying spot in the Grand Swiss, instead of a rating qualifier, makes it much more random who qualifies. With Ferugia and Caruana as the qualifiers in Riga, this topic didn't lead to a further debate, but today Nielsen reminded, reminded of a tweet arguing, end quotes, at FIDE Chess, at FIDE Chess. I did tell you giving an extra candidate spot to the Grand Swiss in order to promote it and using another to compensate Rajbov for political mistakes was eventually going to hurt somebody. Ding is being treated very unjust, having two cycles in his prime ruined. And then we see Peter say, the problem with removing the rating spot on the candidates and adding one to the FIDE Grand Swiss is that it risks making it much more random who qualifies. The candidates should balance the need to all having a fair chance with the likelihood that the best player qualifies. All right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this obviously is very, very, you know, anybody can agree, disagree with this take. But I will say that Ding, out of all the top players in the world, e even even Fab Fabiano, you know, he played well in the Grand Swiss to qualify. But out of all the top players in the world, Ding has been basically punished or harmed more than any other top player. Just going back to 2019, uh, when I think about 2019 in the Singfold Cup, Ding, uh, Ding tied for first place with Magnus Carlsen. This was in September 2019, classical tournament. And then... In the tiebreak, Ding smashed Magnus. He crushed him very soundly in the rapid tiebreaker to win the Singfield Cup. And boom, COVID hits early 2020, and Ding is just stuck. Just stuck with nothing, nothing, nothing that can be done. Um, so Ding actually has suffered more than anybody else. Not, not even close. Um, so let's keep going. All right, we have more to the article. FIDE Director General Emil Zatovsky commented on Twitter saying, FIDE had done all we could to ensure Ding's participation, including numerous official letters. Pity it did not work. Um, <laughs> I, I'm just going to say this. Like, I have nothing wrong with what with um, 
with with what Emil says. But to me, it's, it, it is kind of it is kind of funny that Emil thinks that Fide is important enough to where these letters are going to override, like especially probably the most powerful government in the world and their regulations in terms of uh, getting out of China and returning to China. So I actually find, I mean, I find it a little bit humorous because there's nothing wrong with what he says, but it just seems like they're, they're saying that, that they did all they could, but it just didn't happen. I mean, there, there's, 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 a, there's a good reason, um, <laughs> which is, I mean, which, which I just said. So, all right. Um, okay. Uh, with Ding most likely losing his chance to qualify for the candidates and Carlson potentially not defending his title in 2023, the World Championship cycle has looked healthier. One top grandmaster suggested tongue-in-cheek to start thinking of a separate cycle. GMI Ishiguri, how to join the World Champs Championship cycle with Carlson and Ding. <laughs> okay, that's uh, very provocative by, by Anish. Very provocative. Um, very provocative. You, you, know, you know what he's saying. Uh, very tongue-in-cheek. Uh, that he wants to be like Gary Chess. All right. Um, Fide doesn't have so many. Yeah, Fide's social credit, I suspect, is not not high enough um, when it comes to China. Their social credit probably is, is not where it needs to be. Anyway, let's keep going. Okay. What else do we have? Um, the first leg of the Fide Grand Prix starts February 4th at 6 a.m. Pacific, 1500 Central European Standard Time. You can follow the games live from our events page. Chess.com is providing a live broadcast commentary by GM Benjamin Bach and G and women's women's uh, international master Fiona Stelantoni, as well as as well as Maria Milianova. You can find it on twitch.tv forward slash GM Hikaru, and also you'll see probably some recaps on twitch on youtube.com forward slash GM Hikaru. Anyway, that is the article, you guys, that I did want to cover um, about the Grand Prix. It is supposed to be starting. Um, it's supposed to be starting on um, Friday, February 4th. You guys are asking me, what should Fiat do with Ding other than give him a wild card? I mean, there's nothing can be done at this point. Like, I, I don't actually, I mean, I don't blame Fiat. I don't blame Ding. I mean, the, the one problem is, is that I feel like, uh, if anything, basically correcting that, mis I mean, correcting what was a mistake in terms of Rajabob, but giving him the wild card. I, I don't know if that's ever happened in history. I'm not like a chess historian or anything, but I feel like there should be some, some opportunity. But again, it's it's tough it's tough and um and fide made that choice to have, have the spots from the grand swiss versus rating um in retrospect i actually think it makes some sense just because just because nobody's been able to play so you don't have a high volume of chess games uh for anybody but still at the same time it does feel it feels it feels very unfair to ding that he he doesn't have a chance but i don't think there's any happy solution i just don't think there's a happy solution um no matter how you look at how you look at it and um Expand the field, get the world number three in there. I mean, what they what they could have tried to do, but again, it does it, it's unfair. In other ways, they could have asked one of the players who's playing events two and three to switch out and play one one and two or one and three. But again, if a player just played Vikings A or something and they 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 haven't done preparation, it's also not really fair. So it's tough. Um, why don't I participate? I am playing in the I am playing in the Grand Prix here. So it's just uh yeah, it's just what it is. Ding is one of ten thousand athletes missed chance due to COVID. Move on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, like I said, it's just it's it's rough, and it feels unfair. Um, I mean, because like it just uh, Ding clearly is one of the top three players in the world. He was in 2019. At the end, it's not like he's gotten worse or anything. So uh, Ding won the Sinkfeld Cup, which was the last serious uh, top level classical chess tournament before the pandemic. That was in uh, September of 2019. He performed in it, tied for first place with Magnus, and they beat Magnus in the t in the rapid tiebreaker to win the whole event. So I, you know, I kind of I. I, I Ding was Ding was playing very well, but it's just what it is. And um, I can win the Grand Prix and give your spot to Ding. <laughs> that's actually that's actually that's actually pretty. That's a funny idea. You know, I would say this: if I win, I might actually consider that. I might actually consider that. Thanks for the idea. So now I just have to make sure. Now I just have to make sure uh, to win. Funny thing is, if I win and I try to do that, Fide is probably be like, "No, you can't do that. It has to go by some other some other criteria from the from the Grand Prix." But I will say, if I win. If I if I somehow qualify, I would say that is not a zero percent probability that I might uh, I might actually do that. And hey, if I do that, I probably gain about a million social credits for the next time I go to China. So you never know. You never know.